On March 14, 1992, two of the top college hockey teams faced off in Plattsburgh, New York, for a chance to advance to the NCAA Finals and compete for the national championship. But for one player's family, the game took on a much greater meaning when they found themselves with a lot more than a championship at stake. Some of the footage in the story was taped as the events unfolded. Ice hockey has the potential to be very, very dangerous. There's a lot of collisions, hitting ice, hitting the boards, hitting each other, and sometimes at a very high rate of speed. Need everyone helping each other out tonight, work hard. One of the up-and-coming players on the Elmira College team was 21-year-old center Michael McNamara, number 18. Michael is their only son, and he's just been such a big part of me. Because he's a son that will come up and put his arm around you and say, I love you, Mom. Dolores and Mike McNamara had driven 100 miles to see their son Michael play that night. There was nowhere to sit. It was packed. So we were way up high. It was so crowded. I couldn't sit with the rest of my family. The air was just full of great anticipation of uh, what a great contest it was going to be. The coach of the Elmira team was Glenn Tamaris. We got out early, put a lot of pressure on Plattsburgh. Scored a goal to go up 1-0. John Oliphant was the Elmira athletic trainer. And then gradually Plattsburgh had picked up a couple goals on us. And the score was 3-1. Michael was coming out of the defensive zone. His teammate passed the puck to him. It was a clean check, but it was one of the hardest hits I've ever seen. He didn't even make any attempt to try to get up. And then all of a sudden it gets real quiet in the arena, like, that people sense that something isn't, isn't right. His eyes were open, but he was completely unconscious. It was a very blank stare. He started to go into seizures and his whole body was convulsing. Plattsburgh medical team came onto the ice, including Director of Sports Medicine, Dr. Merritt Spear. Within a very few moments, he was not breathing. I attempted a couple of breaths into his mouth. But within a very few seconds, we couldn't feel a pulse. That's when, when CPR was started in full. I realized they were giving him CPR, and then I was just in a state of complete panic. I started thinking, I've lost one of my children. Peter Fiola had been friends with Michael since their freshman year. Most of the guys stayed on the bench. Everybody became very, very scared. More than one person was crying. And I don't think any, anybody knew if we would ever see Michael again. It seemed like an eternity when we were out there, but suddenly Mike's pulse came back. I stopped doing the rescue breathing, put my head down, and could see that Michael was breathing again on his own. But because he didn't regain consciousness, I wasn't sure whether this was a real temporary thing. Neurosurgeon Soham Patel happened to be at the game that night. The way he fell and bounced his head on the ice like a soccer ball, 
As a physician, I thought that we were really facing a life-threatening situation. And as a hockey parent, I could see that it could have been my boy, my son. There were probably 3,000 people in the arena. And there was pin drop silence. One could hear one's own breathing. Just as I got there, he was coming through the gates of the ice rink. You want to hold them, and you want to say, it's going to be okay. Mom or Dad will take care of it. Hang in there, Mom. But Dad couldn't take care of this. There was nothing I could do. It was in the hands of God. Twenty-one-year-old Michael McNamara was taken to Champlain Valley Physicians Hospital, where Dr. Patel was on call. In the emergency room, I did the full detailed neurological examination. He seems to be very restless and agitated. He's posturing. I told Michael's parents that I was going to treat him as if he was my own son and make sure that he has all the chances in the world to make full and total recovery. Uh, his dad and I were standing there and we kept saying, Michael, you're going to be okay. I love you, Michael. But there was no response at all. I'll never forget it. The CAT scan showed that Michael had sustained a fracture of the skull on the left side. The concern was, is he going to develop swelling of the brain? Is he going to develop uh, recurrent seizures? The days that followed Michael's accident were long and trying. His sisters were all there. You would talk to him and touch his hand. And he wouldn't respond. I thought about the fact of him dying. It was very scary. I care for my brother very much. And I look up to him and respect him. After a couple days, I started facing the reality that he may never wake up. And I just said, if Michael just turns out of this so that I can set him in a rowboat and sit him up and take him fishing, I'd be very happy. One thing that did encourage me was when I would go in there, Michael's heart rate would start to race. So I sort of said, well, jeepers, Michael knows I'm in here. Very early on the morning of Michael's fifth day in a coma, his father went in to see him. The minute I walked into the room and I said, good morning, his eyes just opened right up. Think you could open your eyes up for him? We really all got excited and it was like a celebration. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was so exciting. Within six months, Michael had made a complete recovery. I don't remember the hit at all, but hockey's a rough sport, so I have no blame. I think you just have to take it in stride, and you never can realize when things are going to happen like this, so you can't really blame anyone. I realized that I was fortunate that I didn't die right there on the ice, that I had no permanent brain damage. I thank everyone that made it possible today that I'm still here. Michael worked very hard to get himself back in condition, and the first game of the next season, he was ready. Well, I feel very fortunate. The doctors gave me permission to go back and play. And since I didn't remember any of the accident, I kind of went on playing the same way that I played before. The first time I saw him, it was scary, but then again, it was that little bit of excitement that, good for you. <laughs> The following year, the Myers hockey team went to the Final Four. I'm proud of Michael and uh, the way he's recovered, but it's the kind of young man that he is that makes me the proudest. 
I'm just proud of everything about Michael. <laughs> if I ever have a son, I would want him to be just like my brother. <laughs> Knowing that Michael is well today, there's nothing that I want now. All my five kids are healthy, happy, have done well. I think anything from here on out that I get is extra. <laughs>